Hello everyone, it's Steve with Aptera Owners Club. Today we're gonna to talk about cold weather and its impact on EV range. Because I know that's something that a lot of you guys worry about because um, you guys don't all live in Southern California like the uh, Aptera team does and like I do. I'm more worried about hot weather performance, uh, like mainly AC performance and how we're gonna charge the vehicle when it's like 110 degrees. It's a little funny to think about cold weather performance because I think it's 105 degrees out where I'm living right now. Um, but yeah, so you guys that live up in like Iowa and Minnesota and New York, those kinds of places, you're worried about cold weather performance. So, um, we all know that cold weather degrades, um, lithium ion battery performance. So you get less range in cold weather, how much less range. And that's a very important question. And one of the places that, uh, uses a lot of EVs is Norway. Norway actually last year, I think 85% of their new vehicle sales were EVs. So they are worried about cold weather performance. So at the Norwegian equivalent of the EPA did a real world range test um, back in the winter of 2020 using 20 of the most popular cars um, in their country. So obviously Norway is cold. It's cold in Norway. Um, and so they had people drive the cars and compare it to the WLTP range. And remember the WLTP range is the range cycle test that they use in Europe. We use the EPA cycle test. And so all their cars were fully charged overnight and it was done with a cold start, which means no preheating of the battery or the cabin. People were told to drive it normally um, with the heating, so they, they used the heat you, they used regen, so they just drove it like a normal person would drive it. They started at, it was three degrees Celsius, so a little bit above freezing, went down to negative six degrees Celsius, um, and it was driven in ice, sleet, snow, so not like, so these are you know, real winter conditions, okay? And they told people um, to drive it like they normally would, following the speed limit and um, just driving it like a normal person would drive it. Um, so the, the, the route that they did was from Oslo to, and I don't know how to pronounce this, Hafjell, Hafjell. Okay. I have no idea. Someone who's Norwegian, tell me how you pronounce that city. Uh, I, I, I did the cycling route on Google maps just to see kind of the profile. It's not a lot of climbs or descents, but there is definitely some climbing and descending on this thing. It's not a, it's not a perfectly flat course. So I would say that this is a pretty good test. Um, they didn't repeat it multiple times, but it was a, it's as close to a real world test as we're gonna get. They used heating, um, they drove it on roads uh, around, you know, slightly above and slightly below freezing, which I think is fairly typical temperatures for uh, most of the country. Um, in the winter. I know if you live in Edmonton or something, it's going to get way colder than that. So I don't know how to extrapolate the information for that. Uh, obviously, the colder it gets, the worse it is. Um, but, you know, sleet, snow, ice, that's going to impact uh, range as well. So let's get the answers. How, how did that affect the range? Here's what here's what they did. So these are the the cars that they tested. They tested some Teslas, Kia, Hyundai, Jaguar, Opel, Mercedes-Benz, Audis, uh, Nissans, and you see that th this um, upper part is the gray is their um, WLTP range, and the green was the range that they actually got. So the Mo Tesla Model S. They said that it was uh, 610 is the WLTP range. Their actual winter range was 470. Um, and they do mention that, uh, that it's worth noting that the Model S at the end of the test drove in more challenging driving conditions. The last miles were driven in relatively deep new snow, which increased the consumption significantly. Anyways, overall, if you look at this, the drop in range is different for different vehicles. You can tell like this uh, Hyundai Kona, um, it went from 449 to 405. So it was not a huge drop um, for the Hyundai Kona, but for some other cars, there were more significant drops. Um, and so that probably is dependent on the battery chemistry that they use and the battery thermal management system that they use. But overall, you see that the drop 
is is fairly consistent between the cars. There's some outliers like the Kona, but most of them are fairly similar. And they're, uh, I think it's somewhere in this article, it was about 18%. They lose, you lose 18%. Oh, here you go. The EVs lost on average 18.5% compared to their WLTP range. So I think um, when you look at what battery pack you want to get uh, for the Aptera, most of these use, I think most of these use resistive heaters as well. I know the Teslas use, um, some of the Teslas use heat pumps. I don't know in 2020 which of them were using heat pumps or not because they switched over to heat pumps at some point fairly recently. Um, but a lot of these are using resistive heaters as well. So I think this is a pretty good indication of where the Aptera is going to end up. I would say that you should deduct about 18 to 20 percent of their range. Um, there was another company called Geotab that looked at several cars and they looked at uh, loss of range. And you can see at around uh, zero degrees Celsius or uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit, you lose, you lose, you're down to about 80 percent. What's interesting is at high temperatures at 104, you also lose about 20 percent because batteries don't like super high temperatures either. Um, and then if you're, if you're one of these people that unfortunately live in like, you know, where you have to be at negative 20 degrees Celsius or four, negative four degrees Fahrenheit, I'm not too sure how many places hit that kind of temperatures regularly, but yeah, you're going to be down at like 50% range. That's, that's pretty bad. But I think most people can expect about a 20, most people that live in, uh, places that hover around freezing you're gonna you should adjust by six by 20 to maybe 30 percent uh, range different that means for the quote 1000 mile battery um, you can expect about 800 to maybe 700 700 to 800 miles of range in winter conditions using the heat and driving like a normal person in this during the speed limit um, as long as you're not going up huge mountains or anything like that um, so I think that's a fairly, this this was the best test that I found was this test conducted in Norway. I thought that was the most accurate real world test where they used, they used the heat and they didn't preheat the cars or anything like that. That if they preheated the cars and the batteries, then that would have increased their range a little bit more. Okay. So I hope that was useful to you guys. Um, let me know, what is the average winter temperature where you live, where you expect to be driving? Um, most people don't drive during the dead of night, like at you know 4, 3, or 4 a.m. when it's the coldest. Most people are driving during the day, and usually it does warm up a little bit during the day, even in you know Minnesota and stuff like that. So I would like to know, what is the um, winter temperatures that you're facing um, where you're at? And I uh, look forward to your reading your comments. Thanks for watching as always. Of course, thank you so much to our supporting members. Um, and uh, have a great day, everyone.